Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. We had to ta uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where we find our next guest. He goes into the Nike hot seat today, does Nick Brissetta. Nick, how are you? Doing good. How about you? Good, man. Congratulations. Job elevation, just a year and a half out of college, and now you find yourself the new assistant coach at Chattanooga. That's where Heath Esslinger has named you the uh, the. Well, he got you that promotion. You did a great job, and he recognized it, so he made you an assistant coach just a few days ago. So congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about um, the move from from being a Hokie and, and all that went into your career. I mean, from St. Paris. Uh, you were at St. Paris Graham. Uh, yep. then, then on to Virginia Tech, a highly touted program under Kevin Dresser and, and, and Roby. Uh, but now going off and changing uh, because – Let's face it, when you're a wrestler, it's very myopic and it's very selfish, yep. okay? While well, you get to contribute to the team and all that, it's still a very selfish sport. Or And now you get to be a coach, which in many cases is very selfless. What's the change been like for you? Um, so a lot of questions there, I guess, in one question. Obviously, the transition from being an athlete um, to a coach is um, not difficult, I would say, but it's, it's different. It's definitely a different experience. Um, a lot of, uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier, a little bit of, you know, hand holding, um, sure. for, the, for kids and, and dealing with that side of it, and a little bit of the immaturity, but I mean, that's part of the process and I, I know what I signed up for. Um, we always coach Essinger talks a lot about, we signed up for being, you know, coaches and, and this is our lane. And so this is what we do. You know, you can't, you take the good with the bad you knew what you were signing up for, um, when you decide to be a coach. So that's part of what I consider my job, you know? So. Um, I don't have a hard time with it. You know, I, I'd like to think that I'm adjusting pretty quickly and, and getting used to what it is and, and learning the ins and outs of the business and the, what we call college wrestling. So um, it's been a good transition. Obviously, I've been in different, a lot of different places, Ohio, Virginia, and, and now down a little bit more south um, where the weather is a little bit nicer. But um, like I told you, it makes you know, kind of recruiting down here a little bit harder just because there's not as many programs down here. So it's not the Midwest and or the Northeast or anything like that. So you got to do a little bit more work. And, and I get that um, coming in. But, you know, it's been it's been a, a good year. Last year was a good learning experience. I got to sit back a little bit and learn, uh, watch. I didn't do as much because I was, you know, not in an official coaching position. Um, you know, so I learned a little bit and, and was able to kind of just see how the, the, the gig worked and, and learn and um just get the experience, get my foot in the door, and then, you know, started, you know, just past couple months, I think about a month and a half ago, um, up in the second assistant. So, you know, it's been, it's moving forward. It's been a good process um, through and through. So. Was was Ashley excited for you? She was. This is kind of crazy how we ended up ended up down here. Um, so she knew it was kind of wrestling. That's where my career wanted to be, and, and she knew that. And she was um, uh, aspiring to be a dental hygienist, so... When I was still in college, she was applying everywhere, and, and one of the places her brother actually lived in Chattanooga, so that's kind of how this all started. Um, she got accepted into school down here, and then Coach Hoffman, obviously my coach at Virginia Tech, got the job down here, and then that's kind of how my connection to Chattanooga started. So we both had connections. We ended up here. Fortunately, for whatever reason, we just say fate had its way, and, and it worked. And then, obviously, she knew I wanted to be in coaching long term. Um, whether it's college, you know, or, or maybe if the, you know, college isn't the long-term role, then it would be a club or something like that. But it's always been wrestling um, in my mind. You know, and it's so weird. To man, work, you know, I, knew, here. I knew you were going to Virginia Tech to be an accountant and to, you know, and, and still today, you're still what I consider to be a lifelong learner at UTC. You're con uh, continuing to work on your MBA, but I really thought <laughs> I would see you in a suit and tie as an accountant. I really, truly did. But yeah. we get we we're lucky because again we're selfish. We get to keep you in wrestling. You're brought <laughs> along last year as a coordinator of student athlete development for the mocks. What did you do exactly as a coordinator of student athlete development? Yeah, it's not accounting, that's for sure. So <laughs> I'm lucky about that, you know. But um, uh, yeah, we did. I did a lot of just stuff behind the scenes. You're, you're eliminated. I was uh, I'm part of the uh, RTC too. Um, so I was able to wrestle a little bit with the, those guys that were in club practices like that. Um, um, but, you know, I did, I guess, a bunch of the petty work, running papers everywhere and 
and obviously I can watch film and stuff like that. So um, the behind the scenes stuff, I think, I mean, coaching is all kind of behind the scenes, but I was more just a voice in, in the ear of some of our guys, you know, if they needed help or in terms of experience and mental coaching and stuff like that, and, you know, just stuff like that. But I was around the program enough where, you know, I've spent time in the office and was able to have a, a, a decent amount of impact on some of these guys, I think. So I'm so pretty, you know, there's one thing that always had me scratching my head. How did Daniel and Jonathan, your brothers, um, end up at Oregon State and you ended up at Virginia Tech? At some point, somebody took a left-hand turn at Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. So we were, we, we grew up in Colorado, all of us, most, um, for most of our lives, about 10 years, when I was from about 6 to like 16, 15. So they went to Oregon State from Colorado, which made sense in okay. terms of business. It was a little bit closer. And then when they both went off to school, it was my freshman year. And that's my job. My dad got a new job in Columbus. So we ended up moving out um, to Columbus. So then Virginia Tech was closer to Columbus. It made sense, you know, geographically. Um, and we were far enough apart in terms of age that my school decision wasn't really based on theirs. Their, their two together was um, hugely, you know, related. Um, my older brother went to Oregon State. It was almost a done deal that they were getting the second brother. So he ended up there, and then I was kind of a little bit further removed. We're four and five years apart. So, so my decision. And, and, my, and Michael, your dad, Michael, when he gets his new job, moves you guys to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. How do you not end up at at, at uh, Ohio State? I, man, oh man, they let a good one get away. Yeah, I mean, you can ask the coaches there that. Um, I don't know. I, they, had, they had recruited Camp to Sorry, I know that, and they had the Seaver brothers, so um, they they were set there, I think, in just terms of weight and how it worked out. But, um, yeah, it was close. But, the, I mean, you look back, track record, Bo kind of broke that in terms of for Graham, Bo Jordan. He was kind of the first one to really go to Ohio State, I think, uh, from Graham. And so, I don't know. I just it, it, that's, I guess that's the way the recruiting process works sometimes. It's, you know, who's on you. The connections you have and my best friend was matt stevens in high school and and he his brother brian stevens was already at virginia tech so that was part of the connection i had down there so it's just the way the cards fell you've had some incredible coaches in your life first off your dad uh but also coach jeff jordan and then you know further after you leave there you you are coached up by uh, uh kevin dresser one of the greatest business minds and wrestling minds in the sport uh, not afraid of anybody or anything. He gets yeah. it done. I'm not going to say single-handedly raise the ACC up because he didn't. I mean, all the schools in, in the ACC are powerhouses now and doing well. But um, you look at the job he did, and you're one of those hires that made a difference at Virginia Tech. I look back at your career in 2011, 2012, the ACC champ at 149, conference rookie of the year. And that was an amazing year, but it wasn't the year perhaps that, that you wanted. Overall, 10 and 5, 6 and 3 in duel. And then the next year, the 2012, 2013 season, you lit the candle, dude, 31 and 7. Mm -hmm. That was a year that made everybody go, hmm, hmm. And they <laughs> liked what they saw. And you came on. And then wheels came out the wagon. I don't know what happened. Tell us what happened in the 2013-2014 season. So that was the year I redshirted, I think. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because I don't see yeah. any numbers attached to your name as far as anything even redshirting. Yeah, well, so I did I did redshirt that year. Um, my sophomore year was kind of my coming out year, and then redshirted the, the following year and moved up to 57. That was part of the kind of strategic ah. So I moved up. From 49 to 57, um, had I competed a little bit. I went out to the training center. Um, they fortunately, Virginia Tech was able to send me out there for a couple weeks. Um, I wrestled in the Dave Schultz and, and had an okay tournament, um, and then just wrestled at some opens. But really, that's when this whole and you can ask, you know, unfortunately, the coaches know it, and, and we all know it, and I don't, you know, shy away from it now. That's kind of when my career of uh, being an injured. Nick Bursetta started, okay. you know, okay. being, being healthy. So, you know, I was hurt. I wasn't really hurt that much that year, but I was redshirted. And then the following two years, if you look at, I don't even know what my record was, to be honest, but I know there wasn't more than probably 15 or 20 matches in both years. Um, so my sophomore year, you know, I had more matches than my last two years combined. Yeah. Uh, and that was just a 
the plague of bad luck and, and injury. So I look, at, our... I look at the dude you beat 2012, 2013, Nick Lester, Montel Marion, Donnie Vinson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's no wonder you were All-American that year. It's no wonder you went 31-7, and seven, ACC championship, uh, 2013 All-ACC. I mean, you had that year that everybody hopes they're going to have in college. But you've got that one to hang your hat on. I'm sorry for the injuries because you know what? That's something that can be helped, and it, it can derail uh, a career. But, my God, even through the injuries, you performed so well when you were able to get on the mat. And I wanted so much more for you as a competitor because you, you've wrestled with your heart your entire career. Yeah, well, what I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. Obviously, I had tons of support from coaches and family, friends, teammates, uh, trainers, especially doctors. <laughs> yeah, so, right. You know, they, they I'm, and I'm serious, I can name, you know, Dr. Rogers and Sean Collins, a trainer at, at Virginia Tech. They, they were huge for me because I was always there. But um, the relationships I had and, and, you know, the fortuity through all that, I don't know how, but, you know, it was it was not just me. I can tell you that much. There was plenty of other people involved and, and they kept my head on straight or whatever it was. And obviously I was the one out on the mat performing, but you, you don't get there. And you don't mentally have to give yourself a chance if, you know, you're not in the right state of mind, and I, I can't take credit for that myself. So I'm you, l- fortunate, lucky. But <laughs> Well, you know what I, I look at as a young man that, again, wrestled with a lot of heart. Third place finish as the eighth seed, marks your career high at the NCAAs. Now it's your opportunity to give back, to fight for your athletes, to make sure they're seated correctly, to, to be able to teach them all that you know. You've got a bucket full of technique and and uh, the mind to go and, and explain it you know you can tell them this is what we're doing this is what we we need to change this is how you get better and that's the challenge for you now as a coach right yeah it is and um but it's, it's one that i enjoy you know that's that's the the way i look at the sport now just through through all the injuries and i i was a mental you know kind of a mental guy throughout the whole process and i like to kind of you know i'm almost too um to accounting like, you know, and fine tuned in terms of mentally the approach. But, um, you know, that's part of the sport that I enjoy in, in, in terms of breaking down technique and, you know, breaking down the mental approach to, to sport and, and things like that, and competing and all that. So that's the stuff that, you know, I think that you can make really big strides with, with an athlete as a coach. And I'm still young and learning, you know, and, and learning different ways to do that and, and just learning new things in general and experiences. But um, I really do think that that's, that's the, the greatest part about this, uh, my job at least, is to see, you know, people grow and change, not just as an athlete, but, you know, as a person, but the way they kind of approach things, too. Uh, when you can see someone's approach to their whole day, you know, and, and how they tackle on the day before practice, and then see the impact it makes on your practice, things like that start to, they really start to click for you, you know. So that's the, the thing that I've enjoyed the most is, as a as a coach really um not it's, just the wrestling side of it yeah. it started for all of us when you were at st paris graham lighting the world on fire picking up two state championships the hard way you earned every one of them and yeah. then on to college where again you had your challenges uh with injuries but man when you were healthy it was pretty to watch. So <laughs> yeah. pretty to watch. Three-time All-American. He uh, finished fourth at 157 in 2015. But one of the guys that is on campus now at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, looking to make a difference with Heath Esslinger and staff, and a new assistant coach, was the coordinator of student-athlete development for the Mox. But now, again, he'll be able to go hands-on with these young men the future of the Mox looks bright indeed. We appreciate you taking the time. Best to Ashley, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you having me and, and uh, developing what we got here. So hey, it's go always, Mox. It's always good. Go Mox. Brissetta, named wrestling assistant coach. I'm Scott Casper, Nike Hot Seat special guest today, Nick Brissetta, University of Tennessee, uh, Tennessee at Chattanooga. Thank you so much.